Good day, everyone, and welcome to Good Eats. My name is Oscar Stewart, and I am your host. Today on Good Eats, I will be doing something a little different, touching on a few topics. And before I get started, I would like to say to everyone out there that has been affected by the COVID-19 corona pandemic, which in essence we are all worldwide being affected. But for those that have been touched directly, our sympathies go out to them and our condolences to family that have had loved ones passed away as a result of uh, COVID-19 and Corona. For many persons out there, they still have not accepted the fact that this virus is real. And for anyone, whether you believe it is real or not, it, it's no doubt that it has affected each and every individual worldwide with this being a global pandemic. And we here in the Bahamas, of course, are no different. And so whether individuals want to take it serious or not is affecting us economically, socially, spiritually, mentally. It, it is causing a havoc upon many persons. And in the Bahamas and in this region by large, we know that tourism is vital to the economic system uh, worldwide. And it is actually the number one eco economic income driving factor here in the Bahamas. And with tourism, as we know, we have to feed those tourists and we import a lot of food here in the Bahamas, as stated. On our week one episode with my guest, my RBN brother, Mr. Kerry Turnquist, who is a gardener, an avid gardener, a farmer, and have been in the tourism industry for quite a number of years. Mr. Kerry would have expressed and emphasized in that episode one, the importance of agriculture in tourism. Now we hear a lot of talk terminology, people using the phrase of marrying tourism and agriculture. But because of the fact that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the travel is very limited. We have just scarcely any tourists coming into the country. And so now we have to take agriculture and farming and by extension much more seriously in this country and worldwide. We want to give people the knowledge that they can grow, produce their own feed, raise their own livestock and animals. And in the past weeks, I have had a number of persons asking me uh, relevant to wanting to see farms and go on location. But that has become quite difficult with the COVID-19 and here on the island, many persons are still trying to recover in the farming industry, even as a result of Hurricane Dorian uh, just went past. In less than two weeks, it will be the Thanksgiving with the holiday seasons coming up. And a lot of people are still stressed over this corona situation but 
there are many things still to be thankful for and 2020 still has been a blessing to many persons in midst of the darkness, as I would put it. And so there are many things for us to still be grateful and thankful for. And for those that do backyard farming on a small scale, we know that you may be, at least I know for sure that you are anxious to just see images of the farm, uh, the gardening, the plants, and get more information as it relates to that. But I aim to educate persons to make a transformation of the mind. And so what it is that I aim to do here at Good Eats is bring the knowledge first. So we want to give the theory before we go to the practical side of it. And so I ask you, my viewers, to be a little patient with it. Uh, but for now, I want to give respect and some props to my guests. They are educated, professional individuals who can bring a great wealth of knowledge to those that want to do farming on a bigger scale. And so, like I said, with my week one guest, Mr. Turnquist, for those that are in the tourism industry and with that rebound and bounce back, uh, there are those that want to tie in agriculture, farming with tourism, which I, for one, think is a great idea as well. And so to properly feed ourselves and our guests, that come and visit these shores, these islands, we have to be able to produce quality food of a certain level and standard and raise good, healthy livestock. In our week two episode, we had Dr. Hanna came in and spoke of properly taking care of our farm animals and our livestock, uh, domestic as well. And we want to be able to raise nice, healthy animals, poultry, beef, lamb, mutton, whatever, and particularly in that aspect, for those that are meat eaters as well, we want to provide the highest possible standard of food, not only for ourselves, but for our guests as well. And so Mr. Hanna, Dr. Hanna, pardon me, uh, brought us a great wealth of information as it relates to shepherding the flock, as I put it. And so we appreciated him. At what I'm trying to do here now is just show the pattern, the methodology of what is taking place so the viewers can see it actually, as I would put it, some logic to the madness and the format, the way the shows are laid out. And once Dr. Hanna would have enlightened us on the proper ways to go about treating our livestock, then we can put some emphasis and focus into our produce, our fruits and vegetables and trees. And here in the Bahamas, we know, as mentioned earlier, we last year were seriously affected, impacted by Hurricane Toria, uh, causing great damage to the farming, agricultural industry. And so, in episodes three and four, we brought in the agrologist, the soil doctor, as I refer to him, Dr. Abiola, who would have spoken uh, to soil remediation, uh, amending the soil, 
treating our soil, building up our soil, composting, waste management, debris management, which is also vital to treating the ground here, particularly in the Bahamas, on this island of Grand Bahama, so that we can have the rich, healthy topsoil to produce the best produce that we possibly can. And we appreciated the knowledge and the information that those gentlemen brought here to Good Eats. And as I refer to it, they actually brought Good Eats, good food for the mind. For those, once again, that interested in taking agriculture and farming on a bigger level, and even for those that raise their own animals in their backyards as well, might have a couple of chickens, some goats, some turkeys, whatever. And with those three guests, we got good, healthy green food. Once again, with the information they brought. And I appreciated them here. Uh, Mr. Kerry Turnquist, Dr. Owen Hanna, Dr. Abimbola, Abiola. So they helped us get the knowledge as it relates from that theoretical aspect to when we produce good food, quality food, and tying it into our marrying our agriculture and tourism industry. And I'm gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back with you in just a few seconds. After the first four episodes of Good Eat, what we did after that was, it's like being in school. After learning, we took a little break and got something to eat. And we had guests and my friend, Chef Dawn, who came in and spoke to her knowledge of cooking a worldwide that she has been in, as well as in the tourism industry. And she just came in and prepared a simply delightful, healthy dish for us with that nice guava salmon. Yes, guava salmon. And it was awesome. And Chef Dawn was followed by another chef, two extremely Lovely ladies, the De Gregory's, the mother and daughter team, Cindy and Camille, uh, for Take the Cake Bakery. With their beautiful, sweet treats. It was awesome. I tried to contain myself from, you know, not putting on too much pounds there. <laughs> but yes. And so, the chefs brought in a little snack for us to go on to straighten up ourselves to go further into the show, as I would put it. And they were followed by none other than Mr. Excitement, Mr. Bush T, Fenrick Russell. So after a good meal, and for most of us who like dessert, and after a lot of sweets, we washed that down with some bush medicine and the drinks that Mr. Russell, Mr. Excitement makes are tasty, they are healthy, they are simply made 
right here, most of the products uh, would grow locally in what we call the bush. Uh, but they are very good and very healthy for you. And you drink these products, especially after, like I say, you would eat a lot of sweets and you want to clean out or for certain ailments, illnesses, cold, flu, particularly in this time, once again, with this virus out there, and we now entering into the winter season, uh, which is actually the cold and flu season as well. And so we want to take care of ourselves uh, physically as well, not just in the mind, but in eating healthy and in drinking healthy and proper. And so I would like also to thank those chefs, Chef Dawn, Chef Cindy, and Camille, and in his own way, an artist and a creator, uh, Mr. Bush T. Fenric Russell. And so those seven episodes kind of set a tone, if you will, for me of not only where they now come from, but where we're heading on the show. And after that break, as I call it, uh, uh, literal lunch break for me in the show, we now had our guest, another IECA representative, along with Dr. Abiola. Ms. Shakara Lightberg, who came in for us and spoke to the technical aspect of agriculture and farming and some of the initiatives presented and given by IECA and their partners globally to assist and help farmers and those in the agricultural industry by extension as best they can, also with the knowledge, the technical assistant, um, persons who may be interested in getting grants. Ms. Lightburn would have also spoken to the tourism, agricultural aspect as Mr. K, uh, Mr. Turnquist did, Mr. Ter Kerry Turnquist did. And so this is something else that we are hearing going into the future. So for you farmers out there, some of you may want to consider that we, are, we know that there are already some farms here that have already started it on some of the other islands here in the Bahamas, what we call the family islands. And it's not just here in the Bahamas, but this is a concept that is being welcomed and accepted by many farmers and persons in tourism around the globe, and particularly here in this region. Uh, governments and ministries are welcoming that idea and that concept. And as mentioned before, I for one think it is a beautiful idea. And so with those first episodes of the show, those eight episodes, as mentioned before, I wanted to show my viewers and my guests the methodology as mentioned and to what is taking place here with these shows. I hope for everyone that has been watching and tuning in regularly, first and foremost, I would like to thank you, the viewers, very, very much, and hope that you would continue to tune into Good Eats and participate and comment in our YouTube channel or our Facebook page, when we mention the What's in My Cup segment, don't be afraid to take a guess at it. And speaking about What's in My Cup and taking a guess, I would like to 
thank and congratulate our winners of What's in My Cup. In week two, we had uh, Miss Monica gave a correct response to What's in My Cup with the mango, pineapple, banana smoothie. And she had one, some compost and soil, topsoil for her garden. She's an avid gardener. Hi, Monica, my good friend. And in episode five, we had uh, Miss Charmaine Francis was the winner of that was in my cup segment on that episode with the scrumptious guava salmon that was prepared by Chef Dawn. And so Shaman gave the correct response with what's in my cup. And that day I was actually sipping a guava collect. Now for my international viewers that are watching, a collect is the Bohemian bear. One of the pride of the Bahamas, yes, a bohemian bear, and it's good bear. And so they have now incorporated uh, flavors, fruits into their bears, and the new one, the guava collet, which is very nice and mild, tastes very good. And so that guava collet was marinated on the salmon with a guava glaze, but that what was actually in my cup in week five episode. So congratulations to Ms. Shamin again, who would have won a gift certificate at Chef Dawn's restaurant for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whatever of her choice. And our two-time winner, Miss Monica again, in week seven episode, Mr. Bush T, with her correct response to what's in my cup, which was actually my noni tea that day. And I don't know how much of you know but noni out there, but the stuff smells horrible. And but it tastes much better than expected and it is so, so good for you. And so once again, Ms. Monica was the winner of that episode. And she won, even though she hasn't collected on that prize yet, but she has won one of Mr. Russell, Mr. Excitement, Bush Tears, whichever one to her preference and that will be delivered to her, or she can pick up her side. Okay, Ms. Monica, I will reach out to you later. Thank you once again for your contribution for, to those persons. So, after this episode coming up, we will go a little more into talking science and technology, because one thing I've come to learn uh, in this farming, profession, I would have never dreamed the applications of scientific terminology, science, and mathematics in farming. These are critical and important. And so the bigger scale you go into farming, you will find that you got to have your mathematics together. You got to you have to know equations and applying science and technology will make your job much easier. Trust me, as a matter of fact, around the world, there are farms now with their own labs on location with their science team, their doctors, and they are manufacturing products of what they grow, oils, medicines, lotions, etc., etc. And so 
the science of it makes proper sense to go this route. And so coming up, we will we will go into the more of the science and the technical logical aspect of farming, agriculture, and even fishing. We will speak to persons, young persons who are now choosing agriculture as a career, not only to grow products, but to implement and adopt the scientific aspect of it. Right here in the Bahamas, young Bahamian persons who are studying engineering, uh, science, physics, to incorporate that into the farming industry. I think it's a beautiful thing for the future of the country. And it's something I would hope and pray earnestly that would come to fruition. We will have uh, some more chefs on the show and we will have some more meals and we will be here for the rest of the year and on our next episode, we will actually hopefully have my guest that I like having another chef, international chef, and we will talk more on agritourism and good food, good eats. And so, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I thank you all so very, very much for watching the show. And I want to take this time out once again to thank my RBN family, uh, production team, my director, these guys who helped me keep it together and look good here. Thank you all once again. Much love to you all. And before I close out, I'm going to do this last popular segment. What's in my cup? I'm just having a breakfast smoothie today. And I would like to leave some clothes, but my main clothes is a breakfast smoothie. So for anyone who may be able to guess, the three, the three, it's more than three, but I'll make it easy. Three main ingredients in this smoothie, in this cup, I'll have a surprise, prize for you. So, just think along the lines of breakfast, and mm, shouldn't be too hard. I look forward to seeing who will be the winner of that. So once again, I want to thank everyone for tuning into this episode. I appreciate it. I am happy to present Good Eats to everybody out there on behalf of RBN Network. We are looking to transform lives in a positive manner through educating. So through educating persons with the theoretical knowledge, I want to say, be patient. We'll give you some images uh, on some farms, hopefully to come very soon. But for now, we want to give you that knowledge for you to know exactly what you're doing. Remember, if, like the saying goes, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. And he can feed many persons. So take this knowledge, apply it to your gardening, your farming. We have a lot more to offer you. Thank you all, everyone. Don't forget to chime in to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, RBN TV, and leave your comments. Check it out. And maybe you could see some other shows that you would like to watch as well. 
So thank you much, everyone. Have a great weekend. There's a lot to be thankful for. And hope to see you again next week. Listen, there is a point